is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. I will, I will remember this day. Because the first time I ever, first time I did this introducing my wife, it is a great honor. Um, I met my wife 25 hard years, 25 years of marriage, and eight months of cold. <laughs> when I met my wife, I was really going through something. I prayed to the Lord. I said, God, if you want me where you want me at, and you know me, I, I pray that God send me somebody. Amen. So, I found a wife. The Bible said, a man that finds, finds his a wife finds a good thing. Amen. Now, Miss Miles, when I met her, she gave me a word. She gave me a scripture to read even before we started the code. I read the scripture. I studied the scripture. I meditated in the scripture. And when I seen Miss Miles, we, um, we talked about the scripture. And then I went and seen her again, and she gave me another scripture. <laughs> I read it, we meditated, I meditated on it, and we talked about it. And after then, we started cold. <laughs> Eight months later, we was married. Amen. Amen. And we've been married ever since. Amen. And what you see, to know Miss Miles is to love Miss Miles. Because she is real. Amen. Amen. She a, she a mother of three kids, great mother, and a great wife. And she's the Sunday school teacher. And one thing about Miss Miles, she's a servant. Amen. When she um, know someone is in a need or she get a phone call, Amen. she on her duty. Amen. She trying to help somebody or she's trying to call somebody to help assist in that need. Um, Ms. Miles has so many statues. I can just go on and go on about her, but there's one thing I can say truly about she is a woman of God. Amen. And the next voice that you will hear is Ms. Miles. So let's give her a warm welcome.
Dr. A.T. Pearson concluded that there has never been a spiritual awakening in any county or our country or locality that did not begin in, uni in united prayer. Right. Such was the case in 1857 when a church janitor named Jeremiah Lempier instigated a spiritual awakening in this country with a simple invitation just to pray. Six people showed up the first week, 14 the next week, and 23 the next. They decided to meet each day. Soon filling their first location, they spilled over to the Methodist Church and then to every public building in downtown New York. Horace Greeley's reporter could get around to only 12 meetings during the noon hour, but he counted 6,100 men, praying men. This revival swept New England. 10,000 a week were being converted in New York alone. Imagine 10,000 a week. Prayer meetings in the churches were held at 8 o'clock in the morning. Some of us can't even get up. 12 noon, some just getting up. And again at 6 o'clock in the evening. Revealing the scope and impact of this revival, Dr. J. Edwin Orr, one of the country's foremost authorities on the subject of spiritual awakenings, mm -hmm. said the Baptist had so many people to baptize. Now, this shot one. The Baptist had so many people to baptize, they couldn't fit in their, they couldn't even fit them into their churches. Mm -hmm. Millions of people came to know Christ during the four decades following this revival, and it all just started because someone decided to pray. The Welsh Revival of 1904, the second great awakening in the second quarter of the 19th century, which gave rise to Adventism, the Reformation, and even the birth of the church itself on the day of Pentecost. All these movements began with prayer. It's no different for us today. Prayer is work. It's blessed work, but it's work. The chief sin of the church, the believers of today, is laziness. We are lazy about prayer. We're lazy about changing ourselves. We're lazy about good works. We're certainly lazy about praying through for a great spiritual awakening. We must stop leaving the work of prayer to our ministers, our conference leaders, or our godly parents, our wives, our husbands, and get busy with God on our own knees. Right. If we'll take on this work for ourselves, we're going to be guaranteed the victory. Amen. Satan knows better than God's people that the power that they have, can, that they can have over him when their strength is in Christ. Mm -hmm. Satan cannot endure to have his powerful white rival appealed to him. For he fears and trembles before his strength and majesty. At the sound of fervent prayer, Satan's whole host trembles. Simply put, once God has our attention and we hear his voice, we must obey what he's saying. Amen. If we leave obedience out of this discussion, any hope of experiencing a real revival is lost. Seeking God's face of necessity requires us to turn from our wicked ways. We need extraordinary prayer. Maybe this means skipping a meal once a week. It ain't going to hurt some of us no way. So you can use your lunch hour to get together to pray with others. It may mean setting the alarm clock a half hour earlier so you can spend the first moment of your day with God and still on the telephone. We need opportunities for the body to come together in explicit agreement. Remember Quincy Jones and the We Are the World project that I mentioned earlier. When egos and agendas are set aside in pursuit of a common goal, there's no limit to what the body of believers can do in Christ. And when Christians do this, watch out. The book of Acts records the results of explicit agreement among believers in prayer. That was Pentecost. But one more thing is needed, and that is visible union. We don't need another excuse to divide and separate. Instead of using our energies in these last days to petition, picket, and push for the conferences divided along racial lines, we should use those energies instead to arrange large prayer and gathering, praise gatherings for people of all ethnic backgrounds where God's people can seek his face in the visible union of Christian brotherhood. 
face it. If we can't get along down here, we won't get along. We won't get a chance to get along up there. Right. Agreement, unity, love. Mm. When we seek God's face, we find all three. Yep. And if we will give each other a chance, we will find them in the faces and lives of our Christian brothers and sisters, regardless of their speech. Regardless of their color, regardless of their grade of hair. <laughs> desperate times don't call for desperate measures. Mm -hmm. It calls for divinely appointed measures. Amen. Prayer, extraordinary prayer that is engaged in with explicit agreement and visible union of God's people, it will bring revival. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then the promise is certain. It is God who speaks. There's no loopholes, there's no second guessing, and there is no disappointment. Then it's emphatic, it's unequal, and it's guaranteed. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We need Jesus to hear our cries. Amen. Our cries for the bread of heaven in a time of famine. Mm -hmm. Not a famine of food or thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Amen. Our cries for our children who turn a deaf ear to the Spirit's call. Our cries for a sense of meaning and a purpose to return to our worship and to our churches. Does he hear us? Oh yes, he hears He's just waiting for his church to hear the same thing. That's right. Do we need forgiveness? Oh, yes, we need forgiveness. He's just waiting for his church to recognize the need. All right. Do we need healing physically and spiritually? Oh, yes, we need them both. He's just waiting for his church to fill his prescription for gold refined in the fire. So you can become rich and white clothes to wear. So you can cover your shamefulness, your nakedness, and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. And it will all come in an answer to prayer. If we will pray, then he will heal our land. The promise is certain. Only one proviso and one contingency, we must pray. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, and devoted to prayer. David talked to God morning, noon, and night and wrote the longest book in the Bible because of it. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah's intercessions resulted in Israel miraculously rebuilding the city's wall of Jerusalem in 52 days. Daniel cherished talking with God that he prioritized it three times a day and was willing to give up his life rather than give up his prayer time. From Joseph to Jeremiah, Hannah to Hosea, the scriptures are full of people who discover God really does listen and respond to those who will approach him in faith. Before choosing his disciples, that's why I said God, it's a right now word because Minister Annette, everything she said when she prayed, I've spoken on it and here I go again. Before choosing his disciples, Jesus spent all night in prayer to God. As they followed him, they discovered his private habit was to rise early and pray before the sun rose. Even as he grew popular, he still found time to slip away to the wilderness to pray. We've got to find time to pray. You've got to be willing to sacrifice. We've got to find time to pray. When we are devoted to prayer, scripture testifies that these things will happen. There will be evangelism of the lost. Yeah. Cultivation of discipleship will take place. There will be true Christian fellowship. We can make wise decisions. Needs will be met. True worship will be ignited. And revival will be sparked. We must pray. And we must pray now. Yes. In Genesis 22 and 17. That in blessing I will that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, 
and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. To triumph at the gate of our enemy, the gate to the heaven must be restored. Amen. Gates to a city represented a point of power, a place to exercise control over that city. The prophets prophesied at the gates of the city. The voice of God was heard at the gates. The local church is the seat of God's government and activity in the earth. God gave the church domin a dominion mandate. The church has given up its authority. When you don't manage things at a lower level, they progress to a higher level. Stop worrying about offending people on how and when you pray. That's one of the main things we have in the body of Christ. You can go 10 churches and they, be, they stop praying or change the way they prayer because of offending somebody. Yes. It's time for the body of believers to take back authority in our churches, Amen. in our cities. Amen. We are the gatekeepers. Amen. So stop worrying about offending folks. Amen. We come to serve notice on this day, May the 3rd, 2018, that we reclaim rulership over our cities and our nation. Right. From this day forward, we turn the weapons away from each other and battle the enemy at the gate. In closing, I would like for us to close with the 2018 Unity Prayer for America, which was written by Dr. Ronnie W. Floyd, yes. president of the National Day of Prayer. So at this time, let us um, come together. And what we're gonna do is, as I pray, I want you to be praying with me because there's nothing like prayer. And when Dr. Ronnie Floyd uh, actually posted this prayer on the National Day of Prayer website, it was unbelievable how many hits he got on it, how many people, how many churches that, that, that decided that on this day, May the 3rd, 2018, which is the National Day of Prayer, that they are willing since 1952 to come together and pray on behalf of the body of believers. Amen. So let us pray. Amen. Amen. Let us bow. Let us stand. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, while we come to you in complete humility, we also come to you with boldness in the authoritative name of your one and only Son, Jesus the Christ, who is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In Jesus' name, fill us with your Holy Spirit and lead us as we pray in Jesus' name for America. O oh God, we are burdened for our nation today. We turn from the sin that we have committed against your word and your name. We turn away from your, our contentious words and ways toward one another that has led us to division and polarization. We turn away from our disrespect and our lack of dignity toward each other. And we turn away from our continual devaluation of all human life from the womb unto death in this world. Amen. We also turn away from and refuse to participate in skepticism, criticism, and cynicism in our nation. Amen. We turn away from anything that divides us and we run toward the gospel of Jesus Christ that is the only thing that has the power to unite us together. Lord, in this critical hour in our nation, we pray for unity in America. Yeah. Only you can bring unity, harmony, and oneness in America. Yep. As your word calls us in Ephesians 4 and 3, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit That's through the bond of peace, we ask you to empower us to make every effort to live in unity, to call for unity, and to forward unity in America continually. We pray for the churches in America to unify in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and to pray as one unified spiritual family for America. May your church pray for America passionately, perpetually, privately, and publicly. Mm -hmm. We pray for God's power to unify families, yes. workplaces, communities, and cities in America. Mm -hmm. By your spirit, lead us to forgiveness, right. reconciliation, healing, and unity. Yes. We pray for all people of all ethnicities and races in America to come together as one, living in peace and unity together. Amen. Oh Lord, because you have created each of us in your image, yes. please give us the courage yes. to stand against all racial and ethnic division, yes. denouncing it as evil and sinful, while simultaneously coming together in unity with all persons, knowing this, this is God's will for us. We pray in unity for the security of our nation. We ask you to preserve the United States of America from the forces of evil that are threatening our lives and our future. 
God, please guard all persons in public and private settings from anyone or anything that desires to harm us or take our lives. Our future is in your hands. We agree clearly to unite visibly and pray, pray extraordinarily for the next great spiritual awakening in America. Oh Lord, wake up your church spiritually and convict your people to agree clearly, unite visibly, and pray extraordinarily until the great, to the next great spiritual awakening occurs in our generation. Oh God, we stand together upon your words in Psalm 133 and 1. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Through Jesus' name and by the power of the Holy God's Holy Spirit, we pray for all Americans to unify and to live together in unity. In the mighty and majestic name of Jesus, who is the only Savior and the only hope in this world, we pray. Amen. 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 God some praise. Amen. Amen. Can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do me like the Lord? Can nobody do me like Jesus? He's my friend. Let us stand for the benediction. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, Present you faultless with his presence with seemly joy. To only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.